Andrea John, and you're listening to The Journey. Together, we'll explore, discover, and experience God. I'm so glad that you're here because it wouldn't be the same without you. Ready? Because the adventure starts now. Hey everyone, I want to tell you about an exciting adventure that I'll be going on this year, but could really use your help. I am headed to Mozambique, Africa with Root of Hope and Jesus House. This is very exciting, and although it's a financial feat, I believe that God will provide, and some of that provision will come from amazing people like you. If you feel led to help with this mission trip, or to learn more about it, you can go to andreajohn.com forward slash mission. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The Journey. This week, we're going to talk about something that I wasn't expecting to talk about so early into this season of the podcast, but as I was preparing and looking into what this was going to be about, the topic kept coming up. And what's interesting is it's one of the topics and questions that someone asked when I put it out there that if you have a question that you want me to address on this podcast, let me know. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We today are going to talk about predestination. Crazy. I never thought that I would do that so early on into the season, but I do think it's a good thing to help us understand one, who God is, but also how it applies to our lives Because what you believe about predestination will impact how you live your life. I'm going to say that again. What you believe about predestination will impact how you live your life. It will also impact your quality of life, the joy and peace that you feel, the level of autonomy that you have in your life. It's a very important topic. Um, It also may contribute to some conflict between some of the things you believe about God and yourself and the world as a whole. So I want to start out by reading a passage in Isaiah. I think that this passage explains why I've been so earnestly and eagerly looking into the Genesis story to understand more about who God is within creation and what creation is all about. And it's going to tie into this whole concept of predestination and the things that we see in the Bible about God's purpose. And that's really what this episode was supposed to be about. It was supposed to be about the purpose of creation, but predestination kept coming up. So that's what we're going to go with. So I want to read Isaiah 46, 8 through 10. And it says, remember this, keep it in mind, take it to heart. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. This really explains why I keep digging into Genesis 1 because it really is about understanding those ancient paths, the things of the past, why God did what he did and understanding his purpose and his heart. It's very easy for us to get stuck in the moment of what we're living today and try to explain God in terms of what we see and experience in our culture and society today. But really what we need to do is go back to the beginning and try to understand what God's purpose is. And I say try because the reality is that I don't think any of us will fully, truly understand any of it completely in this lifetime. I think it's something that will take a long time and well into eternity. But those who seek it out will find it. And we're going to see that today. So let's go to Ephesians 1. This is, uh, we're going to read quite a bit from here because there is just so much that we see in this verse that relates to God's purpose, talks about predestination, and um, there's just a lot of richness in this passage. 
One of the things that I just want to point out is that as we read scripture, I'm very big on this, context matters. Last week, actually earlier this week, we were having Bible study and my husband brought up something um, that we were reading and he was reading it within context and I wasn't seeing it. And I thought I was reading it within context, but there was something that I didn't know, something I didn't even know to ask. And I'm just mentioning that because I want us to realize that there's times we don't know what we don't know. We don't know the questions to ask, but as you seek, you're going to start asking better questions. And when you do, you get deeper and deeper. So let's get started. Ephesians 1, I'm going to read it out of the NIV, and we're going to read verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Within context, we must remember that Paul, that's who wrote this, he's saying it here, is writing this to the people or the holy people, the Christians of Ephesus. He was not writing this to us. It serves for our benefit And we can read it to learn from, but it was read it, it was being written to them. We always need to remember that. And there's lessons and things we can learn. As we read this, the first thing we should be thinking about is what is this telling me about God? Because the scriptures are here to reveal who God is to us and what God is trying to reveal about himself to us. So, verse three. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us, there's that word, for adoption. I'm going to read that from the beginning. Take note, the word predestination. We must read it within context and try to understand what Paul is saying about this predestination. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the ones he lo- in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen. Here we go again. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is deposit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Wow. There's so many paths here that I can take. There's such a journey just within these passages, but I'm going to stay focused right now on this whole predestined, uh, terminology and what it's saying. And then there's also a passage in Romans 8 that talks about our predestination, and we'll go into that as well. When we're looking at what it says here, it's so easy for us to see predestined as, you know, pre-planned. That's really what it's saying. It was pre-planned. You have no choice in the matter. This is what God wants for you. This is his will for you, and you can't do anything about it. You were created for this thing. That's very important, wouldn't it be? And this is why I say that what you think about this word will impact how you live your life because it's going to impact how you make your decisions, where you think your decisions are coming from, and whether you have the ability to actually choose your decision or are you just a puppet in this plan of God? So let's look at what it says here in verse um, 
we'll start in verse four, the very tail end, because one of the things we need to realize is that verses were put in only about 500 uh, 500 years ago or so when they started publishing the Bible for easy reference. They weren't there in this letter. So for us to stop at certain verses or do the, you know, how they have it set up in sections, that's not always the best way to start and end what you're reading because you may not be getting a full thought in. So we always have to make sure when we're reading the scriptures, when we hear someone talking about the scriptures, we part of taking things in context is understanding what came before and what came after. And is this particular verse or set of verses tied to something else so that we can get a fullness of what the author was trying to say? The intent of all of this is not about trying to understand what I need to take out of it. It's what was the author trying to say? So it starts off in verse four, very tail end. It says, in love. That's a very important transitional term because he's saying all of this, what I'm about to say is in love. The motive is love. And that's something I talk about a lot. And we will talk about a lot in this podcast. Everything that I write, all the books that I write will all be based on God's love because it is the essence of who he is. In love, he predestined us So he predestined us. Remember, he's talking to Ephesus. And there's times where you can apply it. You have to read within context. We don't know at this point if maybe this is something that can even be applied to us. But he's saying, for he chose uh, in love, he predestined us. And then it's going to tell us what for. So what for? Adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we can be adopted into sonship, which means being a child of God through Jesus Christ. This is what we were predestined for. And this is because it's in accordance to, with his pleasure and his will to praise of his glorious grace, because this is about his grace and him empowering us to be his children because grace is an empowering presence. It is not mercy. It is not you being given something you don't deserve. Grace is much more powerful than that. It is something, it's an embodiment of something. It's an empowering presence that allows us to be sons through Jesus Christ, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So through Jesus Christ, the one that he loves, he has given us the ability, has empowered us and given us the grace to be his children. This is what we were predestined for. What this verse is not saying and how many people I have seen interpret predestination is that you or I, because may not be both, this is interpretation of some, you or I have been already selected as to whether we are saved or not saved, whether we are children or not children of God, whether we go to heaven or whether we go to hell. Many see predestination in that way. They see that term destination as the end result. And that is not what predestination is talking about. Predestination in Biblically, when we look at it biblically, because that's how we want to define terms when it comes to our relationship with God and our relationship with the world, because it all comes and serves under theology, under God and who God is. It's saying that we were predestined by God to become his children through Jesus Christ, because that's his will and his pleasure. And he's done it through the grace, through the empowering presence that he has freely given to us through the one he loves, which is Jesus Christ. This is extremely beautiful and reveals something about God. It reveals that God from the very beginning wanted us, you and me, to be his children. And he made a way to make that happen. His desire is that you be his child. And he's given you the grace, the empowering presence to do that. And that's through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, you can be his child because that's what he desires. That's what he's done. That's what he's predestined. From the beginning of time, he has made a way 
for you to become his child and be adopted as his child. So then it starts talking about how um, we have redemption through his blood, that we have forgiveness of sins. This is all things that happen as we become children of God and that he's um, lavished his love and his grace on us. And this is amazing, guys. It says in verse 8, with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment. This is something that's incredible. Think about this. God has a purpose. He has a purpose for creation, for you, for me, for the whole world. And at times it feels like there's such a mystery to this purpose. It's one of the reasons why I seek out Genesis so much. But it's saying here that with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which means we can come to understand what his will is, what pleases him, what is his purpose. He's revealed this to us and it is through Christ. His will was accomplished through Christ. And as you seek out who God is and what he wants, it is through the life of Christ that you can accomplish and come to understand what God's will and purpose is. In verse 11, he continues, In him we were all so chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So here he's, again, he's not saying that he predestined every single decision you make, every single step you, you make, what socks you put in the morning, what sweater you wear in the morning, what job you're going to do, you know, when you get older, what career you're going to have, who your spouse is. He, that's not what this is saying. It's saying we have all been chosen and we've been predestined according to the plan that fulfills his purpose in order that we who were first to put our hope in Christ. Here, he's, remember, he's speaking to Ephesus. They were the first to put their hope in Christ. Might be for the praise of his glory. And you who are included in this message of salvation, you've been marked with the Holy Spirit. So here we've just seen a lot about predestination. It's a great passage for you to dive into. I really encourage you go on your own and read Ephesians 1, actually read the whole letter because it's an incredible uh, work from Paul that really talks and reveals a lot about who God is and then also uh, shows us, you know, what, how do you translate who God is into how you should walk it out. But before you look at how you should walk it out, go back to who is God within these passages. Because when Paul reveals to us what it looks like to have the fruit of the Spirit or to walk in the Spirit or any of those things, it's because he knows who God is. He's had a revelation of who God is. So it automatically reflects in the ways that we should be walking. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go to Romans 8. And we're going to read Romans 8, 28 through 30. This is a pretty popular passage within Christian sermons and Christian circles. And I'm reading out of the NIV and it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. To those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And this is the passage that really um, roots in that belief that self, who's saved, who's going to heaven is already determined. This is how they see this verse. And I can see how they can get there. But we want to see things within context. We want to see things within the nature of God. It's very important for us to look at what is God telling us in this about himself, because then it'll help us understand, by understanding his heart, it'll help us understand why these things are being said, and also understanding the context of the words, because the way we see certain words today may not be how they were used back in the ancient times. So let's read verse 28 again, because it's so used, and we 
know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I'm not going to get into this verse because we can have a whole podcast episode just based on this verse, but a lot of times we read that God will do good for those he loves, but I I just, I'm just going to read it one more time and then I want you to explore this verse on your own. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. He works for your good. He works through you and for good in your life all the time. For those God foreknew, he also predestined. So here's that word again, predestined. And it tells us what he predestined us for. He says, to be conformed to the image of his son. So again, this was not a predestination of that I was going to wear a yellow shirt today, that I was going to record my podcast today, that I would have a red pillow behind me, that I will not have taken my Christmas decorations down yet. That's not the predestination that the scriptures talk about. Every time, and you can go seek this out for yourself, you don't have to take my word for it. Actually, I encourage you to never just take my word for it. I encourage you to seek it out. This is your journey to God, and you need to make sure that you're getting God out of this, right? So you need to to check things. You were predestined to conform to the image of Christ. This is very powerful. And this is what goes back to why I'm studying creation is because... In Genesis 126, I'm going to read it. We see the purpose of God in humanity. We see why God created humanity. What was the purpose? What When he designed humans, what was he thinking about? And in Genesis 126, it says, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. So you and I, mankind, all of mankind, were created in the image and likeness of God so that... So this is telling us what for, why are we being created in the image of God so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. This is speaking to both right? Both man and woman were created in the image of God. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in the number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed, because he's talking to mankind. I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground. Everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning and the sixth day. I'm not going to get into this today, but just take note that this is the only time God said it is very good. And in here, we can see God's purpose for humankind. And I, again, encourage you to really dive into that and look at what God is saying about humanity, because it will reveal what God's purpose and heart was for humanity. We, you and I, are made in the image and likeness of God. So it makes sense that in verse 29 of Romans 8, it's telling us that we were predestined to conform to the image of Christ because Christ is God and God is Christ and Christ was there in the beginning of all things. He was part of creation. So it makes sense that that's what we were created to be predestined for, to mirror, to reflect, to become the image and likeness of Christ, of God. Hopefully that makes sense to you. We You know, when it says that those he predestined, which is all of us, all of humankind, because we were all created to be and live in the image and likeness of Christ, he's called us. And he's called us. And because he's called us, he's justified us. 
And because he's justified us, he's glorified us. The, guys, I just want you to see God in this, who God is. God does not create us to live a life of suffering. This world that we live on earth is not about us suffering. He didn't create us to suffer on this earth. Yes, in the beginning, God created this, you know, perfection. And that's a word that we could dive into all on its own. And humankind made a bad decision and it has impacted us until today. But God still has a hope for us. He has predestined us to live a certain way. And when humankind made a bad decision that impacted us until today, he made a way for that. And that was through Jesus Christ. And even if you don't feel like you're reflecting the image and likeness of God, even if you don't feel like you look like Jesus, you're living like Jesus, know that you were predestined. God created you in such a way within you, in your being, you were created to be and look like God, you were created to conform, to look like the image of Christ. It is possible. And in Ephesians, we see that that's possible through Jesus. He is the grace that has empowered that to happen. It is through Jesus Christ that we have the ability today to be and live out our lives in the image of, of God. So you may not feel like that today. You may not feel like you're representing God well. Maybe there's, you know, a sin, again, another word that we can dive into, a sin in your life or something that afflicts you, that makes you feel like you're not doing a very good job at being a Christian or being a child of God. But what I want to tell you is that don't look at that. I want you to start focusing on God. I want you to start focusing on who God is, because you're never going to know who, who you're meant to be, what you're called to be, unless you know who God is, because it's in his image you were created to be. So how can you know what your purpose is or how you're created to be if you don't know him? He's the creator of all things. He's like the mold. So getting to know God is important. I would really encourage you, behavior modification is an important aspect to life. Yes, there are times we need to modify our behaviors. But when we focus on who we are and our character first, the modification of the behavior just happens. You don't have to put much effort into it. And when you know who God is and who he created you to be, it makes it easier. I'm not saying it makes it easy. I'm not saying that it won't be difficult. I'm not saying that the path to get there won't cause some conflict within your soul. But it does make it easier. Doesn't make it easy. It makes it easier. It's this bridge that allows you to do it. So as you discover how to live your life in purpose, I would encourage you to start with God. These passages that we read, so Ephesians 1, 1 through 13, I encourage you to read it again, Isaiah 46, 8 through 10, Romans 8, 28 through 30, and we've read Genesis 1, uh, 26 and the rest of the chapter. I encourage you to dive into those passages in more detail and really look for God. Look at the red thread of love woven through those stories, woven through the narrative, woven through the letters, the words that are being spoken. Where is God? What is God saying? What is God doing? Most importantly, what is it revealing about God? It's so powerful. And believe it or not, focusing on God within those stories, it will change your life. It'll change how you live your life. It'll change how you see your purpose, your value in the world. And you'll start to notice that it won't be as hard to... Um, give up, if you can see me on video in quotes, give up certain things because you're not really giving up anything. You're shedding the things that don't align with God's purpose for your life. You're shedding the things that don't allow you to reflect his image and likeness. And it won't be hard because you're moving towards the goal of being like him. And it won't matter what was behind you because you're so focused on moving forward. Um, you know, some would call this positive thinking, some whatever, like whatever words will reach you right now to say, 
Stop thinking about that thing that you don't want to do and start looking to God. And may God be your focus, learning and having a passion to get to know God better and better and deeper and deeper, because that's what's going to change your life. That's what's going to transform your life. And I am so confident about it because that's what's changed my life and others around me that I know live a life full of joy, peace, love, and hope. It is the fact that our focus is on God, not on the things that we shouldn't be doing or even the things we should be doing. It's focused on God and automatically your life is led in a way that draws you towards him. So that's it for this episode. I hope that it has made sense. I hope that it has brought some clarity around the biblical view of predestination. I hope that it's given you some freedom Realize that you do have free will to make choices and that when you are asking God for his will and purpose for your life, that it's aligned with living a life that conforms to the image of Christ. And as long as the decisions that you're making and your uh, the things that you're doing align with the conforming into the image of Christ, you're living the purpose and will that he has predestined for your life. I don't know. For me, it just gives me a sense of freedom. So thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I really hope it's blessed you. I do ask you for a favor. Would you be willing to, one, subscribe to this channel if you haven't? So whether you're listening on the podcast or you're watching on YouTube, if you could just subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends, don't forget to like it. And again, this is a journey we're on together. I do not want to do this alone. So if you have questions or comments, feedback, share it in the comments. Let me know on my social media. You can find me in most places at The Journey with Andrea. And I would love to have a chat with you there. So thank you guys uh, for joining. The podcast will get better and better as time goes on. I thank you guys for being a part of the journey with me because it is so much better when you come along. Thanks. Bye, guys.